this scene, this movie. <sighs> Hey guys, I'm Joey King. I will be watching some clips from my past jobs and giving you the inside scoop of what really happened on set that day. Hi, Emily. Honey? <laughs> Come quietly or the bear gets a mustache. No! Gotcha. I hate you. Get in line. Oh my God. I remember every detail of filming The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. It was my dream job at that age. I was so desperately in love with Dylan and Cole Sprouse, so in love with them. And so when I booked that role, I was just like, my mom used to describe it when she was on set with me. She was like, I could basically see little heart bubbles popping out of the top of your head whenever you got to be with one of them. But man, what a fun experience. It was my absolute goal to be on that show. And I got to play this little daycare brat. I still can't believe I got to do that. I'm, I just, I loved that show so much. I still have the teddy bear. I still have the teddy bear. That's right. Oh my God. I was still naturally blonde, which is mind blowing. I don't know when that stopped. In my world, everyone's a pony. And they we all, all eat, eat rainbows, rainbows and, and poop butterflies. butterflies. Oh my God. So I would say, honestly, without a doubt, this is my most iconic character that I've ever played. Katie from Horton Hears Who. My favorite part about playing her is that sometimes that movie will come in conversation with like people in my life and no one actually knows that I was in it. And then I'll just drop this bombshell information on them that I was the little yellow puffball. This role, has also my most memorable line, which you just played. I'll never forget that. I'll be, I could be on my deathbed and I'll remember that line. Just like a few months ago, Britney Spears posted that quote on her Instagram. And I was like, oh my God, it's me. <laughs> the first time I went into the, the, the first audition, I, um, I had a great time in there, but I was told I was too young. I wasn't quite nine yet. Hi, my name is Joey King. I'm 4'2 and I'm nine years old. Oh my God. That is really, really special to watch. Wow, what a like a little, what a little social gal I was. Um, not much has changed. I, I'm just like kind of blown away at this like footage, honestly. I, I remember that day so vividly, like it was yesterday. I remember how nervous I was and how excited I was and how they made me wear that little brown haired wig because I was like blonde, like I said. I feel like I haven't changed. Like I feel like I'm the same exact person as I was when I was nine, just like a little tiny bit taller, not much. <laughs> I, I remember not not long after that day, they called me telling me I, I was going to be Ramona and my whole world changed, my life changed after that. What an amazing experience and what an amazing day to have footage from. I mean like, dang. <laughs> My mother named me Talia before she was killed. The way I would have been killed if not for my protector. Bane. Goosebumps, I love that movie. This was an exceptionally cool moment for me as a Batman fan. And honestly, this role, this wordless like role changed my life a lot too. I mean, I still get people coming up to me, like men who probably hadn't seen any of my other work being like, wait a minute, are you Talia from Dark Knight Rises? And I'm like, I am like, oh my God, I'm a lot older and my, my hair is back, but wow, they could they could know this. This we shot um, the interior of the prison in London, and we shot the stuff where I climbed out of the pit in India. So I got to go to some pretty special places to film that. Like all these amazing clips you're showing me, I'll never forget them. These were such pivotal moments in my life. Um, and gosh, I mean, I can't say how proud I am to be in in part of the Batman uh, franchise. It's so special. Oh God. <laughs> This scene gives me so much anxiety. What are you 
you doing? Oh my god. Do you see it? <laughs> my palms are sweating. This scene, this movie, oh, it scares the living shit out of me. And I like, I can't, I can't watch this movie anymore. I, I love it. I think it's such a great scary movie, but I am like, I'm still like really anxious about the, uh, I can't even say her name out loud, like the witch in the movie. There was some weird stuff that happened on set while filming. And also like after filming the movie, I don't know if you remember, but the time in the movie that the mom would always wake up on was 3.07. For like a month straight after filming, maybe twice a week, I would wake up in the middle of the night and it would be 3.07. And I just like couldn't handle that. Like it just, that movie is so scary. I basically like out of nowhere developed a severe, like a very serious blood condition when I was on set that was like connecting to like the condition that the mother started having in the movie and I had to be like monitored in the hospital every day while filming and then I got home and I've, I've never had a problem since with that specific condition so oh this movie freaks me out <laughs> look Brianna I know you're better than this can we talk about you for a few minutes can we talk about you instead I'm an open book ask me anything how come you don't have a boyfriend and why did Mr. Genslinger dump you? And is it true that your boyfriend before that cheated on you? Are you barren, Miss Day? And why is your voice so deep like a man's? Oh. Oh, your happiness seems like a mask. Well, I better go. Whoo! What a bitch, am I right? <laughs> First of all, so fun to do. That was a wig. Uh, by the way, a little fun fact, I filmed that after I filmed, uh, I think it was Dark Knight Rises. I think, yeah. Um, so I was still kind of bald. I had so much fun doing that. I loved playing that character because obviously like, I mean, I hope it's obvious I'm not like that character in real life. A lot of my like internet hate that I receive these days, a lot of like ammo that people use is my performance in this episode of New Girl. They're like, see, look how awful she is. And it just cracked me up. Good, it bothered you. It was supposed to bother you. I'm going to paint the letters and then you are going to paint everything else, okay? We're only two days away from the carnival, so we need to move. Chop, chop. Have I ever told you that you're bossy? Yes, but then I told you not to tell me that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you're funny. I prefer the term witty. Oh, I'm more of a slapstick guy myself. Really? <gasps> oh! I'm sorry. Is that the wrong color? <laughs> Gosh, look at us. It's so funny. I feel like that was like literally yesterday and that was like almost, I think six years ago almost. It's crazy. That was the paint fight scene in the very first Kissing Booth movie. Gosh, that movie was so fun to make. This scene particularly was just, any scene with Joel was like being like on a playground, but also getting paid to do it. We got told to be as messy as possible, throw as much paint as each, at each other as we could. And we did exactly that. We had so much fun. I love scenes like this. It's like being a kid and you just get to play around, but you're being told to, so you can't get in trouble. And that's the best. I should tell the priest, the real priest, what is happening. What? What, mom, stop! Mom, no, you're gonna ruin his life! What are you doing, Jamie? He needs to know what happened. You think you're the only one that this is happening? You're going to ruin his what, life! What are you doing here? Please, 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 what's going stop. on? Please. No, seriously, why are oh, you- Oh, sheer. Can someone tell me what's going on? Why? Stop. Stop, please. Oh boy, the story behind this scene, not beating around the bush here, so to speak. I give a, a priest in training a blur job in this movie and then um, my mom finds out and she gets very mad. I mean, that's kind of what that scene's about. <laughs> the scene is so teenager -y, like, stop, what are you gonna ruin his life? It's so dramatic, but I love it. <laughs> it's really cool to look back on that movie because I loved the tone of it. It was this like blend of like absolute hilarious comedy mixed with a lot of dark undertones. I feel like it challenged me in a new way as an actor at that age, especially, you know, I, I got to lead this movie and, and take on this complex role and complex subject matter. And I'm so proud of it. It's like, it's, it's a crazy movie. I like you special. I know. Okay. 
Put a smile on that clean face. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that's my baby. Hmm. Ooh. Boy, oh boy, what a chilling pair those two are. Filming the show with Patricia was so, I mean, I'm so happy that we had each other. We became so close and we had to go through some weird stuff together. Some weird emotions that we had to summon that as people who live the lives, like live our lives the way that we do, we would never feel these emotions and we had to make ourselves feel them. This scene in particular also was really special and weird to film because you know, it's just an example of how Dee Dee put Gypsy in just this view of like infantilization. Like she was just making her feel so small, so much like a child when in reality Gypsy was an adult at this point. I'm shocked that I was able to have such a good time while filming such serious and heavy, heavy subject matter. It really challenged me as an actor and I think I became a better actor from making that show and a better person. I feel like I learned more about myself as a human being on that show than I ever had before. It was transformative for me. Why did you invite me to this party? Just to torture me? <laughs> okay, full disclosure. I invited you because those other girls are always so mean to me. Next time you bring Elisa, someone from band camp or science club or whatever, and then we'll all turn on her and you'll be part of the squad. Oh, it's so funny. I love, I love that I played like an eight-year-old horse girl. Like, it's just so funny to me. Oh my God, I remember where I was. I was in a friend's living room on the floor when I got the email to be on an episode of The Simpsons. And I was like, yeah. I literally just went out loud. I was like, guys, guys, I don't know if I'm supposed to be telling you this, but just guess what email I got. Who doesn't want to be in The Simpsons? I have like photos from that day. I was just like, I was taking tons of photos on like near the donut. And I was like a fan, just like freaking out when I got to the studio. Voice acting versus like live action is so different, but I really love voice work because it really allows you to become a truly different person. You have to convey everything through your voice. You can't do micro expressions with your eyebrows or your smile or anything. You have to give like every emotion and every detail through your voice. And that is so cool. This scene was so funny. We rehearsed for such a long time for these dance scenes. We had so many DDR dance routines to learn and different variations of each routine to learn. Um, this one was particularly exhausting because when we first learned it, it was so fast. It was so daunting and scary at first and then we became addicted to it and literally like, We'd go to dinner and we'd be at restaurants like practicing in our heads. We'd be like, okay, wait, stand up. No, okay, your foot goes there and mine goes over here and then you spin me here. It was just like, it became kind of our lives, but it was so fun. I'm pretty good. I have a decent memory when it comes to that stuff. I feel like I've got good short-term memory. Like I've been learning lines like my whole life basically. And so I'm good at attaining information quickly and then throwing it away forever. So and my long-term memory is not so good. I have problems remembering things actually a lot of the time, but short-term, if you teach me something, I'll probably, I can know it very quickly. I don't understand what is happening. When the separation is dramatic, there's unfinished business. He's in the in-between. <gasps> Ooh, I wonder what this movie is. Well, everyone, uh, 
what we're here for today, now that I have your attention. Um, this is from this is from the trailer for The In-Between. It is my new um, romantic tragedy with uh, Kyle Allen, who's the best. It is so heartbreaking and is so beautiful. Um, and I just can't wait for people to see it. We had an enormously great time making it and so many emotions went into it. There was a lot of tears from happiness and sadness while filming this movie. And I just can't wait for everyone to see it.